I grew up in a very small and, you know, like mountainous town in Switzerland. And, um, you know, I, there, there were all these rules and restrictions, you know, while I was growing up, um, since, you know, there, there weren't a lot of people around and being an artistic child and later on an artistic teenager, I often felt, you know, misunderstood. I, I felt isolated. And um, the only place I was able to be myself or feel safe was basically um, when I was daydreaming or, or generally in my dreams. And, um, you know, at the same time, maybe because, you know, like I was kind of like growing up in this restriction restricted um, environment, I also got these recurring nightmares. You know, I would often dream the same dream and it was always, you know, like me falling down a staircase. And um, since I was kind of dreaming that dream every couple of nights again and again and again throughout my childhood, at some point I was able to change the dream while I was dreaming it. So first I just softened the fall and then I would hover a couple of feet above the ground. And later on in my teens, I started to control um, the flight. So it's basically, I taught myself how to, le how to learn to fly in my dreams, you know, and they became this wonderful dreams that I keep having to this day. It seems to me that you know Los Angeles very well because I mean uh, the kids look for refuge to for uh, um, what's the word I forgot to find peace and and to be protected inside a car which, which is very LA. I love the relationship of them when they go to the car is the only alternative that they they have. Could you explain a little about your experience in Los Angeles and? Uh, Yes, during the pandemic, I, I feel, you know, we got a, a lot of homeless people, not just in my neighborhood, but I think generally on like all, all over, over the city. And um, I, during the pandemic, I bought an electric bike and started since there wasn't was no traffic and I started to take these rides through the city, you know, like to different meetings to friends. And um, in my neighborhood, there was this kid, you know, this young student living in his car. And it just really, at some point, almost moved me to tears. And, and, and the story kind of grew from, from, from there. You know, I somehow mixed my child or teenage years experiences and um, what I experienced here in LA and, and, and somehow melt um, all this together. And, and, and the, 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 that's the way the movie came together. So Simon, could you tell us what is uh, uh, how, how I learned to fly? Because we're not going to use narration, so you will be explaining what the film is about to, to the subscribers. Yes, so um, it's the story of two teenage boys like one the the older one is around 18 trying to get into college and the the younger one is 13 and he is on the autism spectrum even though it's never explicitly um, explained in the movie and um, in the first half of the movie they you know try to survive without parents, they're absent. And it's not really explained what happened. And this uh, eventually they get kicked out of, of the house and have to survive in the car until the older one at some point, you know, gets into college. But even though it seems at the first glance, like a very sad story, of course, there is this sadness in there, but when you look a bit closer, it, it focuses on these little moments of kindness between the two of them and also, you know, random strangers that try to help them, not just physically, but also with ideas. And, and I, I, for me, there is this 
you know, spark of hope in there that, 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 um, or, or maybe a, a way how we should look at the world, especially nowadays. I do think that the relationship between Daniel, the 18 year old and Eli, the younger brother, it's uh, full of hope and uh, complicity and love. So I don't think it's a sad movie. I think it's a happy movie. Great. But... <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm really glad you, you, you say that because for me, it, it's always been that, you know, and, and since you need some conflict in the movie, you know, you need to give them some obstacle. I think it, it, it's just the way um, it starts and then it, it, it becomes this journey of hope. What brought you into directing from all the stuff that you could have done? You're saying you grew up as a very creative kid in a, in a small town and all that. Um, it, it's funny. I I wanted to make a movie that's very simple to produce. You know, two brothers, um, a house, and a car. And you know, if in worst case, I something I was that I was able to shoot myself. You know, I'm exaggerating a little bit and um i somehow had all these elements you know but i not necessarily brought the puzzle together and then you know one day i went to this acupuncture appointment i had some you know like pain in the back and i was lying there <laughs> needles all over my body and suddenly this flash hit me and i not only saw the structure of the movie but i knew what the characters were i i really heard them talk and then i rushed home and 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 you know like in a frenzy kind of started to write the script and and, and finish the first draft in in about 10 days and um that became basically what what we shot two years later so how is life in los angeles oh i you know as an as an immigrant coming from from you know like this small town um of switzerland for me it's such um the beauty of los angeles is that the the horizon is so broad you, you have this you know you have people from all walks of life and 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 again, you know, like a lot of characters that I also try to picture in the movie. So LA for me is this huge playground of, of, of inspiration, food, locations, little stories that I, that I um, observe every day, bits of dialogue. And, and, and the longer, I've been here for about 15 years. And the longer I live here, I think the more I appreciate the city. 